Um, probably one of the biggest things, like I just said, is the conditions. I very rarely will reach for a stick bait first on a slick, calm day. There's some occasions where you'll get away with it and you'll still catch them on a slick, calm day, but really, I prefer some wind or at least a ripple. And it doesn't have to be big wind. I mean, when I say a ripple, I'm just talking about if that water's dimpled up and there's enough ripple on it to, to create some refraction when the sun hits the water, you've got an opportunity to catch them on a stick bait. Um, water temperature is gonna affect, you know, when you decide to throw a stick bait, the weather conditions, the water conditions. A stick bait is probably not the best bait to look to when the water is extremely muddy. I'm not saying you can't catch them on it because I've yet to find a place where the shad start making loud noises in muddy water. Fish still eat shad in muddy water. A stick bait's got a certain amount of rattle to it. You know, I mean, my baits all have rattles in them. They do make some noise, so it isn't a no-no, but it's probably not the best opportunity. A stick bait is more of a visual bait. You want the fish to be able to see it better. When you're not looking at targets, though, the thing that really comes into play for me is utilizing either my Navionics, my Lowrance mapping, or studying a map if you don't have the capability to have mapping on your unit. Because the key things that are going to tell you where those fish are, even if there is visible cover, more than likely is going to be your channel swings, points, and transition areas. I mean, fishing is pretty simple if you will re always remember those keys, no matter what bait you're throwing in most cases. Those are really, really key areas to look. When you start talking about offshore stuff, the same thing comes into effect, but that's when your mapping on your units become even more important. And probably, I wish I would have thrown a slide in here, is, is everybody in here that uses Navionics mapping aware of how you can set your safety contours up on your, your Lowrance or your Navionics mapping? You can actually shade depth contours to be a different color. And if you'll turn that safety contour on whatever depth you're trying to concentrate on, it just opens up the way you can look at a lake because it basically will outline every place you need to be looking when you're fishing offshore, you know. The underwater timber and things like that, that's the stuff that you've got to find on your sonar. So, you know, understanding how to read your sonar and your mapping together is really, really important. Like I said, uh, in the springtime, there's two things you want to be looking for, and that's either finding the fish relating to bait, because if I go into a creek or uh, pull up on a point or am looking for fish and I'm just not seeing any bait at all on my sonar, I'm not going to be real apt to want to fish that area. I mean, there's going to be places and times that you may not see the bait that you're still going to catch fish, but that's going to be one of the biggest keys for me. And two years ago when we fished a classic here on Grand Lake, that was the biggest key that I went by. When I would idle into a creek, I generally always shut down in the middle of the creek and I start idling back and forth, you know, down channel swings or cross points. And if a creek or a pocket has bait in it, I'm going to spend some time fishing it. If I don't see any bait, I may fish one or two key places, but I'm not going to spend as much time until I start locating bait. So, you know, determine where the bait is and, and then find fish related to structure. And that structure could be boat docks, it could be brush piles, it could be a number of different things. Again, the right bait and the right equipment, I feel like, you know, the springtime is as critical a time as, or the pre-spawn period is probably as critical a time as there is for sizing down your line. Generally, the fish are a little bit deeper due to the water temperatures, and generally you want to get that bait a little bit deeper, and just like Pete said, the smaller diameter lines you're fishing, the deeper you're going to get the bait. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. The 5-4 to 1 gear ratio, 100% pre-spawn, I'm going to be throwing that bait on a 5-4 to gear ratio reel. I hope you enjoyed the preview clip and for more like that and the entire collection subscribe to the Bash University TV and if you want the tackle that you see on there I want you to go to the Bash University tackle shop powered by Tackle Warehouse and click right here and it's all at your fingertips.
You want to become a better angler? You want to catch more and bigger bass at your local pond? Then check out Bass University TV for hardcore bass fishing information. Hey, I'm Pete Kluzek. And I'm Mike Iaconelli. And this is Bass University TV. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. Everywhere I go in the country, I'm trying to use these techniques because I catch big fish that way. From on the water to in the classroom. We want to use that bait to help make that area even smaller and really, really find that sweet spot. You'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. You want something that's got a nice limber action that's gonna allow you to build pressure and keep those hooks pinned against that fish's mouth. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Hold on, because you're gonna catch some big <laughs> fish. Information is power in the sport of fishing, so learn from the very best. That's a key theory in all of fishing. Subscribe to Bass University TV today. Man, does it trigger a lot of strikes. Here's the part that you're not going to hear anywhere else. This is the Bash University TV exclusive.